Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we certainly will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad you can join us here today. My name is uh, Suffragan Bishop-elect Frankie L. Quinn, lead pastor here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, Erie, Pennsylvania. And we certainly uh, do thank and give praises unto God for allowing us to be here with you on today. We certainly do thank God, as we have already stated, for how he has truly blessed us. The Lord has blessed us. And I'm so glad uh, that the scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we certainly want to do give honor until our leadership here at Christian Ministries. I thank God for my lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. We do give praises unto God for her. And we certainly thank God for all of you that are uh, joining us from near and far all over this great country and in different continents of this world. We thank God for you all as well. And we certainly do want to thank God uh, for being a part of uh, the Nipain States Council, the New York, New England, Pennsylvania States Council, where our diocesan bishop is Bishop Clarence Turner and his lovely wife, Dorothy uh, Turner, as well. And we thank God for our presiding prelate of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith, uh, Bishop Lambert Gates and his staff. So we want to uh, delve right into our Bible study uh, on tonight because I believe we have a, another word from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I'm so glad that uh, God is, uh, and, and what it was it, uh, back in uh, the prophet's day, there was a famine in the, in the land for the hearing of the word of the Lord. Uh, but that's not true today. Uh, that was at that time. Today, there is a word from the Lord. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Um, um, obviously, if you have a particular prayer request, and <laughs> if we was all together, I would ask for those requests. But, you know, uh, God sees and knows. I'm glad that he's omnipresent and omniscient, amen, and omnipotent. So you can make your requests known unto the Lord at this time. If you have any particular prayer request, just put it in the atmosphere, uh, and the Lord hears and he knows. And though we may be limited in my space, the God and is no wise limited in his space, because he fills all space at all times. So let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, Father, you've blessed us to come together one more time. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on today. Remember those that are sick and afflicted and going through in their bodies and in their spirit. We ask you, Lord, that you bless those that are on the front line, not only the medical staff, but those that are caretakers and workers in all walks of life, and even those that are uh, in the uh, grocery stores and, and those that are keeping stores open, period. Bless them, Lord. They're on the front lines as well. And we ask you, Lord, that you continue to show forth your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. Even in this particular time, Father, we thank you and we praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. And I just want to uh, invite your attention uh, this evening uh, to the book of St. Mark, the book of St. Mark, uh, chapter 13, the book of St. Mark, chapter number 13. And um, I want to say that last week we dealt in the book of Philippians when we talked about how to go through a crisis, how to go through a crisis. And and those of you that um, weren't here or um, didn't hear that particular class, uh, thank God that we do have it recorded. Uh, it's on our Facebook page, uh, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith, and it's also too on our YouTube page, uh, of, and it's YouTube at uh, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith. And you'll be able to re-listen to those uh, at your leisure 
And those classes and those, those Bible training and studies, I hope it will be it help you to be able to go through what we're going through right now. Uh, the Lord has really shifted the focus. Um, I was teaching prior on a series out of James uh, about maturing the saints and the saints being mature. But uh, since this has happened, um, the coronavirus and going through uh, surviving this particular state that we're going through, the Lord has really shifted. He has really shifted us, um, uh, not necessarily in survival mode, but uh, a mode uh, wherein we should be able to uh, uh, sustain and, and go through. Because like I said earlier, when we come through this, we should be better. We should be stronger. Amen. Hallelujah. We should be grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I believe that once again, that all of this is happening because the Lord truly wants us to seek him. He really wants us to call on him. He really wants us to stop, drop and roll, so to speak, uh, in, in a sense of an emergency if we we're on fire with that he, we would draw closer and nigher to him. As the scripture says, if my people that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and literally seek my face and turn, amen, from their wicked ways, he said, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll heal their land, and I'll forgive their sins. So I want you to turn with me as we're looking at today's Bible class. Today's Bible class will be enduring unto the end, enduring unto the end unto the end. Can you say that with me? Enduring unto the end. Thank you, Lord. I've heard somebody say at one time, you know, you it, uh, how you start is good, but how you finish is even better. Thank you, Lord. You may have a shaky start, but you need to have a strong finish. Amen. Uh, so we want to uh, you to turn with me uh, to the book of St. Mark. St. Mark chapter 13. And I want to read in your hearing a verse of scripture uh, 13 and 13. And the latter part, part B of that scripture is what we're going to be working on tonight. And, and Mark 13 and 13 says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall in Endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be saved. And um, I always like to, to get into the scriptures and talk a little bit about the scriptures, how we got up to this point. Um, in the book of Mark, uh, especially if you really want to study this out, it really begins at uh, Mark chapter number 11. It begins at Mark chapter number 11. And it goes all the way through until the end of Mark, the Mark chapter 15. And Mark chapter 11, uh, Jesus has this triumphal entry into uh, Jerusalem. And Mark really has Jesus going into Jerusalem at this particular time with his disciples for the very first time. For the very first time. And uh, while he is there in Jerusalem, he has the triumphal entry. Um, you know, that's where they put the palms. That's where we get our Palm Sunday. They strew the palms around and they cry out, Hosanna, uh, which means, Lord, save now. Save now. Hosanna in the highest. And then a week later, they're going to be crying out, uh, uh, crucify him. But we see that uh, through this, then Jesus, once he gets to Jerusalem, he really goes there into the temple and begins to teach. And when he goes into the, te the temple, he throws over, he's, he throws over the, the tables and, and, and gets cords together and scourges them and starts to whip the people. And he makes the proclamation that, uh, my, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And then from there, uh, they start to uh, question and examine him. 
and, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees begin to uh, ask him questions about uh, um, uh, what's the greatest commandment and, and Jesus is, is teaching and he's coming up against opposition and then he's cursing a, a fig tree which, which uh, is a, a symbolic, I'm going somewhere so stick with me, uh, that's symbolic to, to, to him uh, saying that uh, you know, if you don't get it right, this nation is going to be cursed. And then he uh, gives a, a parable about a, 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 a sower in, in a vineyard. And, and in that vineyard, it lended out the husbandmen. And the, uh, when, the, when the landowner wanted to receive fruit from that uh, vineyard, they killed him. And they, they killed one of his servants. And then they killed the last servant. And and Jesus was teaching that uh, parable. You can read it. Jesus was teaching that parable and making it known that they were really trying to wipe him out and kill him. And that made those other people there really angry and made them upset. And they would have killed him, but they feared the people. They feared the people. So that brings us then uh, to this 13th chapter. I've said all that to let you know the kind of like the hostility that was going on uh, uh, and Jesus was really railing on the people uh, because they they didn't really uh, uh, the leader the leadership really didn't uh, weren't about the things that be of God but they were about their own things that would promote them and anytime you're in leadership serving the people of God you've got to have a mindset that you are a servant a servant of the Lord. And when you're a servant of the Lord, you can't uh, have your own ambitions first. You've got to lay aside those ambitions and really serve the Lord with a purpose in heart, with a purpose in heart. And that is, uh, as Jesus said, that he gave gifts, uh, the fivefold ministry for the building up, for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ. So in this, this particular chapter, chapter 13, amen, let us delve right into it. Um, the first verse, uh, Jesus, uh, it says, and as he went in, out of the temple, uh, one of his disciples says unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings uh, are here. And basically, if you think back to what I told you, that the disciples at this particular time, they, they entered into the temple or entered into Jerusalem really for the first time, and as Mark would bring it out. And they were at amazement. They were awed at the temple. It, was, it would be more or less like a, a country boy going to New York City and seeing all the big buildings and all the skyscrapers and all they can do is just look up because they're looking up in amazement. They're looking up in amazement. So they were really amazed at, at the temple structure and how it was well built and how high it was. So um, that's what those disciples were saying. And this is as, as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And notice verse number two, Jesus uh, answering said unto him, seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be one stone uh, upon the other. There shall not be left one stone upon the other that shall not be uh, thrown down. And what Jesus was saying, and this statement really uh, got him in trouble with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because uh, later on they would bring this statement up uh, when they brought him to the judgment hall, saying that Jesus said that if you destroy this temple in three days, we'll raise it up. And um, they brought that accusation again against Jesus at that particular time. But here Jesus is really... He is making a declaration unto himself. 
Uh, basically, he was telling them, don't really focus in on this natural temple, which is going to be torn down, but focus on me, who is the, the, the temple of God. And the scriptures that bear that out are found in uh, Psalms 118, verse 22, and Isaiah 28, verse 16. And it basically tells you that Jesus is the stone, the, the stumbling stone, the rock of offense. Thank you, Lord, the sure foundation. Hallelujah. And, and we can trust in him to be that sure foundation. Thank you, Lord, the stone, that tried cornerstone. Hallelujah, that if you put your trust in him, you shall not be confounded or you shall not be lost. You shall be saved. You shall be delivered. So as we begin then to move, because uh, uh, I really want to get to the meat of the Bible study, as we begin to move uh, through this uh, 13th chapter, it is basically saying then uh, verse uh, number three, and verse number three says, and as he sat upon the mountain of, of olives over against the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately. He said, tell us when uh, shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? So as we notice here, that the inner circle of Jesus has just enlarged. Uh, not only Peter, James, and John, those were his main group, but also uh, Andrew. Andrew joined the middle, uh, the Jesus' inner circle. So we see here that Jesus' inner circle is growing. And they asked Jesus a question. They asked Jesus a question about when shall these things be, and also what shall be the sign of your coming? Basically, that's what they were asking him. What shall be the sign of your coming? And what I like about Jesus, and when we begin to study these particular scriptures, uh, Jesus really, he, he answers the question, but he doesn't answer the question. He answers it in a real indirect kind of way. And, uh, uh, and the indirect kind of way that Jesus is, is answering the question, he's really just giving them information. But uh, toward the end of the chapter, he kind of gives a more specific uh, answer to their question, but he really leaves it in a mystery. Because the scripture says itself that even the Son of Man doesn't know uh, when he shall be coming, but only the Father, he knows when that time shall be. So Jesus kind of gives an indirect question without really answering the question, if you allow me to say it. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but it, he, 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 it, it's a miracle. It, he just gives a, really an indirect question question that really indirectly doesn't answer their question, but he wants them to really focus in on something else. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus uh, wants them to do. And that's what we'll uncover here on tonight. What was Jesus really saying? So you, we notice then Jesus says, uh, verse number four, number four says, uh, now, Jesus is not saying this, but he says, tell us what shall these things be and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled. And then Jesus answering uh, them began to say, take heed, lest any man deceive you. So first of all, uh, we have to take heed, uh, lest anybody be deceived. Jesus doesn't want the saints of God to be deceived. He doesn't want anybody to pull uh, the wool over our eyes. So therefore, uh, he doesn't want us to be deceived, thank you, Lord, because of what's about to take place. So he says, uh, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. So many people shall come and say that they're anointed, some people shall come and say that they are the Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. So he says, 
And when ye shall hear, notice what he says, of wars and rumors of wars, uh, be not troubled, uh, for such things must be. Notice, this is why I said that he's not really answering the question uh, because he says, I'm telling you these things, but the end shall not be yet. Amen. The end shall not be yet. So he's really uh, 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 not really uh, answering their questions, but he's just giving them information. All right. So notice he says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places and there shall be famines and troubles. And, and notice, and they, these are the things that bring uh, sorrow or travail. Verse number nine, he said, take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you up to the council and they shall deliver uh, uh, you up to the councils and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings and for my sake for a testimony against them. Notice verse number 10 and the gospel must be preached uh, must and the gospel must first be published uh, among all nations uh, but when they uh, shall lead you and deliver you up take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak neither uh, do ye uh, premeditate but whatsoever ye shall be given you in that hour that shall ye uh, speak ye for it is not you that speak but the Holy Ghost then he says in verse number 12 now the brother uh, shall betray the brother to death and the father the son and the children shall rise up against the parents and and shall cause them to be put to death verse 13 and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved all right so we see here brothers and sisters i read all of those scriptures uh, just to kind of give you a framework as to what is really happening. Uh, Jesus is giving us a scenario. He's really telling us these things that shall be going on uh, in the world up until his coming. Amen. He's not telling you uh, basically these, these are the signs of my coming as opposed to these things are going to be happening in the world until I come. Until I come. These things are going to be going on. And if we look back on what he said, we see uh, that there are many people that came to say that they are the Christ. Uh, if you look at uh, Jim Jones uh, and we look at um, uh, uh, that, that guy that was going on in Waco. Thank you, Lord. He, they were both declaring that they were the, the, the Christ, David Koresh. They were claiming that they were the Christ and they were leading people astray. And then we see, you know, uh, uh, people are being beat in, in, uh, for the name of Jesus. Uh, people are being killed even in churches today. They're being killed uh, in churches calling on the name of the Lord. We know that these things happen. Amen. We know that there are, are, are fights. There are rumors of wars. Hallelujah. There's kingdoms that come against kingdoms. And we know that these things have been going on down through the years. And then we know that, hallelujah, we know that uh, uh, parents uh, and, and children, they, they, they get into fights. They get into arguments. Thank you, Lord. There's some family disruption between their brothers and their sisters, and people are being hated for the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so what Jesus was saying then, that, that, that before my coming, there's going to be a lot of pressure in the world. 
There's going to be a lot of turmoil in the world. There's, and these things are going to happen, and they're going to happen down through the years. Not necessarily showing the sign of his coming, but showing the, 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 what the world is going to endure uh, until the end. Until the end. What end? The end of the church age. The end of the church age. The church age began in the beginning of Acts, in the book of Acts, but, but it's going to continue until a, a very specific time. And be during this very specific time, there's going to always be chaos. Hallelujah. There's always going to be turbulence. There's always going to be wars. There's going to be fights. Thank you, Lord. Are you here with me that Jesus was just getting his people in the mindset that, that these things are going to always happen as long as this church age is. And then even beyond, it's going to happen even through the tribulation period. After saints are going to be raptured from this world, there's still going to be turbulence. There's still going to be turmoil until he establishes his millennium kingdom. But I don't want to get into that, but I just want to stay focused in on the church age. Amen? Hallelujah. So what Jesus was saying is, is that pressure will take place. Thank you, Lord. And the pressure will take somebody out. Hallelujah. If you're not careful, thank you, Lord. If you don't build yourselves up, if you don't get yourself rooted and grounded, that the pressure of this world is going to take you out. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying. So he really doesn't really want us to be uh, 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 focused. Uh, the one who uh, patiently perseveres. That's what Jesus is really want us to focus on. Those who patiently persevere, thank you, Lord, and are empowered by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, those are the ones that are going to make it to the end. But those that don't persevere, those that don't build themselves up, they're going to be taken away, hallelujah, by the tests and the trials, by the turmoil, by the things they see and the things that they hear because they haven't really built themselves up in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you here with me, saints? Thank you, Lord. We've got to build ourselves up in Christ Jesus in order to endure until the end. And that's what Jesus was wanting the saints to focus on. He didn't want the saints to focus on necessarily the turmoil that's going on around in the world. But Jesus is all about a message of hope. And his message of hope is, I want my people, hallelujah, that, that trust in me, I want them to build themselves up. I want them to uh, be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. I want them to understand that this world is going to be in turmoil. This world is going to be in chaos. Hallelujah, because it must be. Thank you, Lord. But I want them to who who are who are who are, are, are have their mind focused on making it. I want them to build themselves up. I want them to patiently wait and to endure until the end. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So focus on the hope and not focus on the pain. Thank you, Lord. Focus on the hope. Don't focus on the trials and the tribulation. Hallelujah. Don't focus on, on the turmoil that's going on because these things must be. So let me talk about then. Let me break down then. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That, that verse, uh, number 13. Uh, uh, St. Mark chapter 13 and verse 13. He says... And our subject today, once again, is enduring to the end. Amen. You've got to be able to endure to the end. Thank you, Lord. So uh, verse 13 says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure 
to the end, the same shall be what? Saved. Amen? The same shall be saved. So now let's talk about now that word endurance. I got another half hour with you, and I want to spend it now as we laid the foundation and the groundwork, and I hope that you uh, are following along uh, because what I'm about to say now is, is helpful to your walk with Christ. Uh, endurance training. Endurance training. When we think of the word endurance, uh, the word endurance means to last, to continue in the same state without uh, perishing, to last, all right? To continue, to continue in the same state without perishing, to remain, thank you, Lord, you'll be the uh, last man standing, to remain, to abide uh, and, and sustain without breaking up, without yielding uh, to the force of pressure. Amen. You don't allow the force of pressure to take you out. You remain. You abide. And, and, and trying to give us a, a, a greater understanding of, of what I mean is to uh, endure uh, unpleasant situations or difficult processes and situations without giving way. In other words, to endure an unpleasant or difficult process or a situation without giving up, amen, without giving in. In other words, uh, uh, tests and trials, they are common to us and they're going to come. You're going to hear about these wars and rumors of wars. You're going to hear about situations and, and conditions that will attack your faith, that will attack you and, and cause you to want to give up. Amen? But, but uh, to endure means that though it's unpleasant, though it's difficult, amen, and, and you have to go through a process, Amen. You, but you, you don't allow it to take you out. Amen. You don't allow it to move you from your steadfastness. You don't allow it to move you from your hope that is in Jesus Christ. In other words, uh, there may be situations. I'm, I'm going to get away from that word. There are situations. Thank you, Lord, that we have to confront uh, and, and do as Christians. We have to confront sin. We have to uh, confront our own emotions and we have to confront hard things at, at some times in our walk with the Lord. But, but we, we endure it. We, we confront it without shirking, without, without falling back, without, without getting out of the race. We run the race with patience, with endurance. Amen? So in looking at that word endurance, endurance then one seeks to increase their ability to last for the duration. Amen. Endurance looks at, at lasting for the duration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The script says, he that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus is with us for the long haul. Amen. He's with us to the end. Amen. Hallelujah. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He said in his word that I'll be with you always, even unto the end. And, and there's another word I want to bring up. That word is called stamina. Stamina. Can you say that with me? Stamina. And that word stamina is different from endurance. Stamina is the ability to perform at a high peak for a period of time. You know, it literally means maxing out your effort, amen, at a high level uh, for a period of time. And, and, and what I mean by uh, the difference, I want to show you the difference so we can get a, a clear understanding of what Jesus was talking about by enduring to the end. Uh, when I think of, of stamina, Thank you, Lord. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a runner. I like to uh, run on the treadmill. And um, uh, I like to go on that treadmill for like probably about two miles, 
when I'm there. If I go over two miles, I start to lose weight. Thank you, Lord. I start to burn up too many calories. So I've learned uh, to cut back my, 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 my distance uh, to two miles. Thank you, Lord. And uh, uh, sometimes I have, I have cranked up the treadmill. Thank you, Lord. And uh, to see how quickly I can perform uh, those two miles in a limited period of time. And that's stamina. The ability to, to, to jog, hallelujah, for a high, at a high pace at my peak level for a period of time. Thank you, Lord. That's stamina. Uh, but, but, but oftentimes what I do is I, I go for endurance, which, which means that I slow down the pace. I don't crank it up to six and a half or seven uh, miles per hour. I crank it down to five. Amen. And and that pace is a more comfortable pace for me. And 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 I run those two miles. And when I'm done, thank you, Lord, I have literally uh, uh, endured it. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the long haul. It's different from me cranking it up to seven or cranking it up to six, trying to hit those two miles in a shorter period of time. And that takes stamina. But when you're trying to look at a long distance kind of run, thank you, Lord, uh, uh, you slow it down and you keep pace and you have a goal in mind and you're keeping pace to last to the end. And so that's what Jesus is talking about us. He's talking about us. We've got to literally look uh, for endurance, look at a, a, a long range kind of a plan to keep us going at a long range, but, but you're slowing down the pace and you're enduring. Amen. You're enduring. You're not trying to run it as a sprint. People who, who run sprints are built differently from long distance runners. Thank you, Lord. People who sprint, they got all big old muscles, big old legs. Thank you, Lord. And they, they take off. Shoo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. They run that race. They run that race quick. Amen. And But they have built themselves up to be, to be quick. Thank you, Lord. But if you look at those long distance runners, those marathon runners, they're lean and they're slim. Thank you, Lord. And they look at not running uh, 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 a quick mile, but they're looking at running a long distance type of mile. Amen. So it's a different type of, of, of endurance. Amen. So this is what Jesus is talking about. When we deal with endurance training, endurance training deals with a focus or abiding until the end. Amen. A long range. And uh, while you're looking toward the end, thank you, Lord, you're looking with the ability to resist negativity, uh, to withstand pressure, amen, to recover from uh, setbacks. Thank you, Lord. Have immunity to trauma and wounds or fatigue. In other words, uh, when I get started uh, on that treadmill trying to get my two miles in, my mind is telling me, you can't make it. I start out my bones and I start aching. Thank you, Lord. I start, I'm tight. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and all kind of thoughts go through my mind. Just give up. Just slow it down. Just stop. So I got to fight all those things in my mind. Thank you, Lord, to tell when my negative thoughts tell me I can't do it. I got to rest in those positive thoughts. I got to tell myself you can do it. You can endure it. And, and sometimes when I'm making those jogs and I'm trying to get it in, sometimes my back hurts. Amen. Sometimes my leg hurts, my thighs hurt, my calves hurt. Hallelujah. And, and I gotta, but I gotta endure it. I gotta endure the pain until it starts loosening up. I gotta endure the pain until it starts feeling better. Thank you, Lord. And that's what endurance uh, uh, what Jesus is trying to teach us about enduring unto the end. Hallelujah. That, that you may face some traumatic times. You may face some uh, 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 trauma in your life. Some things 
in you may, may happen. Crises may come. But you've got to talk to yourself and encourage yourself to realize that, hey, those these, these things are happening. It's not going to take me out of my goal. It's not going to take me away from my focus. I'm still got my mind made up and my heart is fixed. I'm going to endure this hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ because I got a goal in mind. I got, a, I got an end goal in mind. I realize that trouble don't last always. Hallelujah, that he that shall come, he will come. Thank you, Lord. I realize that what I'm going through is just a light affliction. Thank you, Lord, that this light affliction is just but for a moment. And I got to realize that, that this, what I'm going through is working for me. Amen. It's bringing me closer to my goal. It's bringing me closer to what I'm going through. It's actually building me up. Thank you, Lord. And that's the kind of mindset we got to have. Thank you, Lord. We got to realize that, that I can withstand the pressure. That, that he that began a good work in me, he shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to allow my, my circumstance or my situations to take me out. Hallelujah. And, and in order to do this, you've got to literally build yourself up. You've got to build yourself up. Now, I've limited myself to two miles. But I didn't just start with two miles. I had to start with a half a mile. I had to start with a mile. I had to then go and increase it to a mile and a half until I hit the two mile mark. Thank you, Lord. So what did I have to do? I had to build myself up so I could endure, so I can endure to reach my goal. Same way with your walk with Jesus. You've got to build yourself up Hallelujah. The scripture says, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You got to build yourself up in order to maintain, in order to last. Now, what if, what happens to the individuals when they stop training, when they stop exercising? Thank you, Lord. They stop for, let's say, a period of a year. They're not just going to be able to get back to where they were before because they've lost something. They become weak. Their body has, 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 has atrophied. Their muscles aren't as strong. So what do they got to do? They got to build themselves up back again. Amen. To get themselves in that peak performance position. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to build ourselves up in these times Hallelujah, to get ourselves back in peak performance position. My Lord, that's why he allowed this corona to happen. That's why he allowed us to be isolated and secluded so that we can build ourselves up, so that we can get ready for what's about to take place. Hallelujah, that's why I said when we should be better. We should be stronger when we leave this condition. Thank you, Lord. When we come out of this test, Hallelujah, we should be stronger. When we come out of this trial, we should be stronger in the name of Jesus. And the only way that you can be stronger, right now you have to build yourself up. Right now you have to build yourself up. Thank you, Lord. And that brings me to my next point. Hallelujah. When you're building yourself up, uh, especially in the natural, you got to focus on, I'm going to say four different areas. The first area you got to focus on, they tell you, is your cardio. Amen. Then you got to focus in on your strength training. Amen. Then you got to focus in on your stretching. Thank you, Lord. Your body movements. Get your body stretched out. Stretch your body. Thank you, Lord. And then you got to focus in on how you eat. Thank you, Lord. If you don't eat right, Hallelujah, then, then, then all that you're doing can be for naught. So you got to focus on very specific areas to keep yourself in shape. You got to focus on your cardio. You got to focus on your muscle, uh, uh, your muscles. You got to focus on your stretching and you got to focus in on what you eat. Amen. Hallelujah. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Lord. You got to focus. Thank you, Lord. And in your endurance training with Christ, you got to focus. Amen. You got to focus on your spirit, soul, and body. Amen. You got to focus on your spirit, soul, and body. If you want to be strong, you got to focus on your spirit. Amen. Your spiritual life. Amen. Building yourself up spiritually. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then you've got to focus in on your soul. Thank you, Lord. Your soul is the is the is your seat of affection. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You got to focus in on your body. Thank you, Lord. What you eat, what you do. And I want to take the next few minutes just to go into those couple of things on how to do that. Thank you, Lord, when you focus on your spirit and what your mental capacity. When I say your soul, I'm talking about your mental capacity. Amen. Your thoughts, your reasoning, and your physical, your body. Amen. Paul said, bodily exercise profiteth little, but rather exercise thyself unto godliness. He wasn't truncating physical exercise. He was just comparing the two. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And 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 what outweighs physical exercise is spiritual exercise, hands down. Amen. That's what Paul was saying. He wasn't saying that physical exercise doesn't have its benefit. Amen. So so let me just delve into that. To build yourself up spiritually and mentally. Thank you, Lord. They kind of go hand in hand. Uh, first of all, you need to be positive. Thank you, Lord. You've got to have a positive mindset. Uh, 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 and having a positive mindset, you've always got to look at the glass half full as opposed to half empty. Uh, what causes a lot of people to have anxiety is fear. Fear the unknown. Uh, they allow their minds to travel in places where God isn't even yet. <laughs> if you allow me to say it that way. Hallelujah. God ain't even there. Hallelujah. We allow our minds to go there. Thank you, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. But we got we to gotta bring our minds in. Thank you, Lord. We got to bring our, our thoughts into captivity. Thank you, Lord. And not, and not allow our thoughts to be higher than the thoughts of God. Hallelujah. But bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Thank you, Lord. And we got to be, have a positive mindset. Have a positive mindset and reduce your fear and anxiety. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. And that brings us to the next one. You've got to cultivate the mind of Christ. And what do you mean, Brother Pastor, by cultivating the mind of Christ? Jesus said, uh, uh, the book of Philippians says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, uh, but found himself as a fashion of a man. He did what? Humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, whereby God, hallelujah, have highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess. So therefore, if you're going to uh, have the mind of Christ, hallelujah, you've got to cultivate it. And what I mean by cultivating it is that you've got to prepare your heart, hallelujah, to receive seed and to allow it to grow. Thank you, Lord. My God, when you're planting a seed, you cultivate it, you dig around it, you dung it, you water it. Amen. You allow it to get some sun. Thank you, Lord. And, and you protect it on a regular basis. You've got to guard your heart with all diligence because out of it comes the issues of life. Thank you, Lord. Don't uh, uh, allow your mind to be hearing a lot about news and, and bad news and all of this. It's good to keep yourself informed, but don't allow yourself to be consumed by those things that will cause you anxiety, that will hinder the, the, the growth of the word of God in your mind. Hallelujah. I'm, 
I wake up in the morning, I pray and I seek God, I read the word of God, and, and then I turn on the news, whatever. I'm just saying, turn on the news and I hear all this negativity. It's competing with that word that was sown in my heart. Hallelujah. And, and if, I, if I don't allow that word to take root, it won't grow. That's what cultivation is. You've got to allow the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, to grow in your heart. Hallelujah. You got to get that mind. You got to think the way Jesus thinks. You got to talk the way Jesus talked. And that brings me to the next one. If you want to grow spiritually, you got to meditate in that word day and night. Hallelujah. You got to literally be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Hallelujah. That whatever you do, you shall prosper. Hallelujah. You got to meditate in that word. And that word meditation literally means you got to repeat the word. Hallelujah. Quote the word in your heart. Hallelujah. Quote that word in your mind. We're talking about endurance training. Hallelujah. Uh, my old bishop said a lazy person can't be saved. Hallelujah. If you don't, if you don't put forth the work, hallelujah, then, then your mind can't be transformed. Uh, the scripture says, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You got to renew your mind, renew your outlook. Hallelujah. You got to realize that we that began a good work in you. Hallelujah. He'll perform it. Thank you, Lord. You got to realize that God is for you. And if God be for you, who then can be against you? Hallelujah. You got to let that mind be in you. Thank you, Lord. That was in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, he believed in the victory. Do you believe in the victory today? Do you believe that it's already won? Hallelujah. That, that, that you can endure. That you can make this journey. Hallelujah. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. No matter what everybody says, Thank you, Lord, that he, will get, he that gave you power, he's able to perform it. Hallelujah. Do you believe today? You got to believe. You got to believe. Hallelujah. What Jesus taught, what Jesus said. Thank you, Lord. And that's what helped Peter. Thank you, Lord. You remember Peter. Peter, he, he denied Jesus, didn't he? Thank you, Lord. He, in, in, in the midst of that test, when Jesus uh, uh, was in the, 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 the hall to be judged before his crucifixion. Jesus uh, told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Amen. Before the clock crow. Amen. And that's what happened. But what helped Peter, what held Peter together, Jesus told him that the devil desires to sift you as wheat. But he said, I prayed for you. Hey, cut up those shot. That your faith will not fail. So when, when his faith was being tested and it looked like he was losing the victory, all Jesus needed to come back to him and said, Simon, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my sheep, feed my lamb. And that encouraged Peter because when Jesus told him, he said, I, I did the same desires to sift you, but I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And he said, look here, Peter, when thou art converted, Hallelujah, strengthen thy brother. Hallelujah, strengthen thy brother. So that gave Peter the courage, thank you, Lord, to get back uh, when, when, when he fell down. He gave him the courage and the strength to get back up when he fell down. The scripture says that a righteous man falleth seven times, but he gets back up. That's endurance. Amen. Being able to get back up. That kind of a shot. Being able to stand, being able to go through perseverance. Thank you, Lord. Being able to go through persecution. Thank you, Lord, with your mind stayed on him. Thank you, Lord, my God. My God, we've got to be able to endure, build ourselves up spiritually. And when you build yourself up spiritually, you got to also uh, build yourself up mentally. So you got to be positive. You got to be trusting in the Lord. Amen. You got to know that you trust in the Lord. My confidence is not in man. Uh, my, my trust is not 
uh, I'm going to say this, and I don't want to offend none of my church members, but my trust is not in my church members. My trust is not in my wife, my children. Amen? Hallelujah. They, they limited in their ability. They may, they all may want to help me. Uh, and I want to help them as well. Uh, but your trust and your confidence has to be in the Lord. You got to trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart and not lead to your own understanding. But you've got to be able to acknowledge him in all your ways so that the Lord can direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Put no confidence in man. Hallelujah. When it comes down to your soul salvation, you got to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. you got to have your mind made up and your heart fixed. Like Paul said, I am persuaded. Hallelujah. That nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, 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 he had to work to that point. Amen. Hallelujah. He had to, he had to, he had to go through many tests, many trials to get to that point. When we talk about endurance training, huh? And to have endurance training, you also have to have some resistance training. That's what build up your muscles. Amen. And those tests and trials. Thank you, Lord, that we go through. That those are the things that build us up. Hallelujah. Those are the things that cause our chest to stick out. Hallelujah. What you've been through, thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, they can, that builds you up to cause you to become strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. So you got to go through something. Amen. Hallelujah. you got to have some resistance training. Thank you, Lord. And, and the more you live, the more you'll be able to live. Hallelujah. The more you go through, the more you'll be able to go through. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So you got to uh, uh, embrace your tests. Embrace the tests. Embrace your trials. Thank you, Lord. Count it all joy when you go through diverse temptations. Don't have it in your mind that the Lord is picking on me. Quote that scripture in the book of Romans. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Thank you, Lord. You got to realize that, 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 that whatever is going on, hallelujah, God has allowed it. Thank you, Lord. And if he has allowed it, he's already made a way of escape. Hey, hallelujah, so that we may be able to bear it. Hallelujah, because Jesus wants to present us all faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. That's Jesus' goal. That's why he's enduring. Hallelujah. That's why he puts up with us. Hallelujah, because he has a goal in mind. He don't want to see none lost. He don't want to see none forsaken. Thank you, Lord. And he wants to present us faultless. Hallelujah. The, when, God, when God gave me that vision, Thank you, Lord, about Jesus presenting us faultless. Thank you, Lord. He took me to a place wherein there's a ceremony that goes on, an ordination or, or a wedding celebration. Hallelujah. And, and everybody's around and they're looking at the bride. And, and when the bride comes through, everybody stands. Hallelujah. And everybody ahs and oohs and, and it starts to look good. Hallelujah, and, and that celebration then hits another level. Hallelujah, and that's what uh, is going to happen to the saints of God. When we all get together, when we all get to heaven, oh, what a time. Hallelujah, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard what God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah, we're going to have a time, saints. Thank you, Lord, and that's what Jesus is looking to. Amen. That's what Jesus is looking forward to. So we got to prepare ourselves. Amen. We got to prepare our hearts. Hallelujah. Because we're going to have a time. So in, in order, hallelujah, to build up ourselves, we've got to continue. Thank you, Lord. When there's issues, when there's problems, when there's issues and problems, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Thank you, Lord. Solve them through the help of the Lord. That's how wisdom comes. Thank you, Lord. Wisdom comes when there's a problem, when there's an issue. That's how you gain wisdom. My God. Hallelujah. So, so, so in your process of figuring it out, 
Huh? Hallelujah. Because the Lord has already worked it out. You got to figure out what he's already done. That's what gives you wisdom. So when problems come, don't say, oh my God, I've never seen this before. What am I going to do? Appeal yourself up. Go to God in prayer. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who give it to every man liberally, who abradeth not. God doesn't get upset. Hallelujah, when you come to him, he said, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find help to help you in your time of trouble. Hallelujah, so when you're facing a problem, when you're facing an issue, thank you, Lord, a problem and an issue, they can be solved. Amen. And that's where you get your wisdom. That's how you get your wisdom. I'm going to say that again. That's how you get your wisdom. So those of you that are praying for wisdom, expect some problems. Expect some situations to come. Amen. So God can give you the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you desire. Hallelujah. You got to pray. Thank you, Lord. If you're going to be spiritually strong, you got to pray. And not just any kind of prayer, lackadaisical prayers. You got to pray with faith. Amen. Pray believing and trusting God. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes you just got to stay in his presence while you're praying. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help me. Thank you, Lord. Especially, uh, uh, you know, we ought to be praying more. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, before trouble hits. Becoming a habit of prayer. I've, I'm, I'm conditioned myself to do things habitually. Thank you, Lord. Do things out of habit. Hallelujah. So, so that when, when my mind gets confused, I can still do what I need to do because it becomes a habit. And, and because it becomes a habit, it's become a part of my character. In other words, well, uh, uh, prayer is a habit with me now. And when trouble hits... I'm not, I'm not saying, well, what should I do? I fall back on my habit. Amen, my God. Hallelujah. You got to fall back on your habit and pray. That's what drug addicts do. When, when, they, when they get trouble, huh? they fall back on their habit. <laughs> I'm not making fun of uh, um, uh, people that are struggling with drugs and addiction. Amen. But I'm just trying to give you uh, an understanding. Amen. How, how habits are, are, are influential if you work it out to your good. Amen. So you pray. You got to pray. You got to pray without ceasing. Amen. That means you be always constantly in a prayer mode. Thank you, Lord. And while you're constantly in a prayer mode, thank you, Jesus. You, when, when things come your way, because you are praying always and in season and out of season, uh, 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 you're able to make the right decision. And then you got to pray that steal away prayer. Amen. Meet the Lord for a half. For first of all, like we said, building yourself up. Start out with five minutes a day. Meeting the Lord in that steal away prayer. Closing the closet on your knees. Work then it up to 10 minutes. Then go to 15 minutes. Then go to 20 minutes. And then go to 30 minutes. Build yourself up. Thank you, Lord, and keep it going till we're in. You can get an hour in of prayer. Hallelujah, on a daily basis. Build yourself up. And remember, thank you, Lord, my time is almost over here. But remember, then you got to eat right. Hallelujah, and you get to eat right, you got to read that word. Amen, you got to get in that word. Hallelujah, you got to study that word. Not just reading for information, but be reading for content, reading for understanding, reading for revelation, reading to put on the whole armor of God on so that you'll be able to stand, hallelujah, in the trials and tribulations. Thank you, Lord. You got to be able to endure, amen, to endure to the end. In order to endure to the end, you got to build yourself up. We should be literally putting ourselves in training, Huh? You should be considering yourself in a training mode. Hallelujah. What? What am I doing? I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm building myself up. I'm seeking God. Hallelujah. I'm cultivating the mind of Christ. 
Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm meditating in that word. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I got a goal in mind. Uh, my goal in mind is to lay aside every weight uh, and the sin that does so easily beset me. All the people who start out uh, uh, that, are, that they need to lose weight, they should have a goal in mind. I want to lose 20, 50, 60. I want to lose 100 pounds. Whatever the weight goal is, that's what you got to keep in your mind. Amen. Without a vision, the Bible says the people perish or they live a chaotic life. Hallelujah. You got to have a mindset that, that I'm going to endure, that I'm going through. Hallelujah. That, that I'm building myself up. That when this 30 days is over, I'm going to be stronger. Hallelujah. And then what you do is, I just want to give you a golden nugget. What you do is when you build yourself up, Hallelujah. You literally prepare yourself for the next level in God. When you're able to endure what, what you're going through right now, God will, this will come to an end. This too shall pass. But when you come out, will you be stronger to endure the next level? Hallelujah. Will you be able to go up higher? Hallelujah. My God, I want to go up higher, saints. Don't you want to go up higher? Hallelujah. I want to go deeper, deeper in the Lord. Well, that's our time today. Thank you, Lord. I hope something today was said to you to encourage your heart. Hallelujah. To give you something to think about. Thank you, Lord. That's what Jesus meant when he said in that uh, uh, Mark 13 and 13. Thank you, Lord. But he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. You got to endure to the end. Hallelujah. Notice what I said in the beginning that Jesus in this particular chapter, I think that that's why a lot of us have missed this uh, in saying that, uh, uh, you know, that all of these things are happening. So how come Jesus hasn't come? Jesus wasn't saying that these are the signs of my coming. What he was saying was that these things are going to be happening until my coming. Hallelujah. So, so, so then it's going to get worse. Amen. In the tribulation after the saints are rapture. So, so therefore, he's saying, don't allow these things to move you. Don't allow these things to trouble you. Amen. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Keep your eye focused on the coming of the Lord. Amen. And while you're focused on his coming, build yourself up. Hallelujah. Do what is necessary. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Build up your mind. Build up your spirit, your soul, and your body. Hallelujah. Build yourself up. Endure to the end. Look for the long term, not the short term. Don't be a sprinter. Be, be a long term runner. Run the race. If you're going to run this race, notice what he said. Run it with patience. Amen. And then recognize that in order for you to be built up your muscles, you need some resistance training. And that's testing trials. Amen. They're there to give you pressure to give you pressure to build up your faith, to build up your prayer life, to build your mind spiritually. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's why he said, count it all joy when you go through diverse temptations. So saints, be strong in the Lord. Amen? Until we meet again and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen? I want to speak to... Uh, those that are in Christian ministries, thank you, Lord. Uh, remember that, um, uh, thank God for you. Remember that we have our uh, his ability to give through Tidely, Tidely, amen. You go on Tidely, get the app, find our name, and you can give in that respect. Uh, we've had some people that had great success. They've already given, hallelujah, through our website. We went right right to our, our bank. And I want to thank you uh, for trying it and thank you for, for accomplishing it.
They found, they went to the app store, got tidily, downloaded it. Thank you, Lord. Found our church. Hallelujah. And they were able to give. Also, too, you can mail in your tithes and your offerings as we're, uh, you know, as these times are what they are. And also, you can put them in our drop box, which is secure. We have a drop box. We can drive by the church, drop it in the drop box, and the drop box is secure. And it's covered under the blood, under the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I enjoy y'all. Y'all forgive Pastor Quinn for uh, going over. But my God, my God, hallelujah. We just hit the tip of the iceberg. Uh, let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, we ask you to allow this word to penetrate and saturate our hearts. Give us that mind, Lord, to endure to the end. Hallelujah. Lord, bless us to be strong in thee in the power of thy might. Hallelujah. Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, we pray for those that are sick and afflicted that are going through. We pray, Lord, that you'll cover those with the blood. Hallelujah. Protect from danger seen and unseen. Thank you, Lord. Keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you. Hallelujah. Give us that perfect peace that passes all understanding. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus that we are healed, that we are set free, that we are delivered. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And we'll praise God for you in Jesus' name. Uh, we'll meet again on Sunday at 930 for our Sunday school lesson. And then at 11 o'clock for, uh, for our morning service message. Amen. Uh, hopefully we'll have our praise team here. They'll give you an A selection. Hallelujah. So let us join one another in Jesus' name. Amen.